last thing you expect a Mini to be described as is hardcore. You simply don't associate its bright-eyed cartoonish look with proper anger. The current John Cooper works is a pretty good steer, but there are some who don't find it involving enough. They then will be more happy with this, the Mini John Cooper Works Challenge. This is one of just 100 Mini John Cooper Works Challenge cars. Each one is individually numbered and looks a little bit different from the car upon which it's based. A normal person will just see a Mini with a scoop and some stickers, but those in the know will know they're onto something special. They'll also hear it. The challenge gets a trick exhaust that's so loud it's not strictly okay for use on the road. You turn it on and off using a Bluetooth thing on a key, and it sounds unholy for a Mini. just a bunch of stickers. No, there's loads of stuff under the skin. For example, there's a proper quave differential, there's adjustable nitron coilovers, you can fiddle with the ride height and the camber, uprated brakes and some Michelin Pilot Cup Sport 2 tyres as well. This is a serious bit of kit. Considering the JCW this is based on already has a pretty sorted chassis, you've got yourself a bit of a tasty motor. Its engine is the same 2-litre turbo as you get in the regular John Cooper Works. That means 228 horses, 236 pound-foot. Its 0-62 time is the same 6.3 seconds and it'll top out at 153 miles an hour. And with all that extra gear on board, it's actually 15 kilos heavier than the off-the-peg car. And that's with weight-saving measures like not being allowed to have sat-nav, manual aircon only. This is for the UK only because we like hot hatches more than the rest of the world, so we're better, sort of. So I imagine at this point there's a few people wondering exactly why Mini would be making this. It's a limited run, it's only for the UK. What's the real point of it? Well. You see, numbers don't only make a car, and the team behind this, well, they know what they're doing. It was created by the people who make the Mini Challenge racers, guys who race them and therefore know what the Mini can truly do when it's given a chance to shine properly. There was some involvement from the UK's Evo magazine as well, and they know a thing or two about cars that go fast, so, um, that. The brief was a good one. Take a regular Mini and make it suitable for the track, but not so hardcore you couldn't use it on the regular. That's why you've got adaptable dampers for the road and the track. You can adjust them to your heart's content and your own setup, should you wish to. And it's why this has rear seats, where the hardcore, super-fast Mini GP cars don't. You can put children and things in the back. It's a special car made by clever people who know how to make cars feel special, designed for people who want to feel like they're driving a miniature race car on the school run or when they get themselves to a track day. In theory, it's rather wonderful. So is it the world's best hot hatch mini thing? It reminds me of RPM Technics 911 CSR, the one that's that halfway house between GT3 silliness and practicality. It's more track oriented, but you can still use it on the daily if you're feeling fruity. This is kind of like that. It's got the lightweight or lighter seats. You can't have a sat nav, you can't have climate control, you can't have X, you can't have Y, because this is the very limit of livable and track fun. And I like that a lot. A while ago, I drove this back to back with a normal JCW. Same engine, same power, same 0 to 60, all of that. But here's the rub. Where on some corners in some places the JCW would understeer, this just keeps gripping, it just keeps going. You feel the diff work, and the steering feels just a little bit better, just that bit smoother. It's so solid, beautifully planted in the corners. And you can adjust the dampers so you can have it set up for the road. And when you want to come to, say, an empty racetrack with a bunch of mates and fanny around in it, you can. It's turned an already sorted chassis into something a lot better. A lot better. It's a truly stunning bit of kit. I got out of it thinking, hang on, why aren't all minis like this? This is the first step.
on what I hope is going to be a lot of cars like this. If there is just that extra step above, you don't have the JCW, you have the JCW Plus. Say they make the Challenger full-time thing. This was like a, a backroom project with a bunch of people who really cared about making an awesome handling and sounding car. And they did it. The gear shift is slick, it's smooth, it's a little bit light for my tastes. But I think they're trying to make it easy to make people not afraid of buying the manual because this is manual only. This is a car for drivers. This is a car for people like you, people like me, people who like driving fast things and having fun. Also, this has a little bit of a trick up its sleeve, some electrics to make your downshifts a little easier. Stick it in sport and every time you downshift the engine will rev match for you. No bad thing, I think, because it means people don't cock up heel and toes and you can turn it off if you want to but the pedal layout the pedal box means you can use it you can heel and toe and you don't have to feel guilty for it and i'll tell you what it makes a hell of a racket this has a special track only noise mode which basically means it sounds like a machine gun when you're going at speed and it can't help but make you smile where the normal jcw is a little bit soft and a little bit squidgy and a little bit wallowy this you can really abuse it. The brakes use bits like they get on the Mini Challenge race car, and man, do they stop the car. They are so effective. The pedal has really a little bit of travel on it, and then you nail it, and the car just stops. You lose so much momentum so quickly. And the Yore in here, oh, it's so smooth. This is a car you buy because you want this car in particular. It's not mega customizable, but there will only ever be a hundred of them. Which means this is going to be snapped up by the hardcore mini Easters really soon. They'll just be gone. They'll be all gone. And I'm not surprised. I do think the mini look doesn't lend itself that well to being super aggressive. I thought it did a while ago, but you know what? I've changed my mind. It does look very cutesy. But on the flip side, that means that when you go to a truck day, people are going to start laughing at you because they think you've just bought a Mini and you're going to understeer everywhere and you're going to be a little bit of a joke. But actually, you're going to be going quicker than that. As that crossbar between road and track, Mini's made an absolute stonker here. Yeah, it's awesome, but the car it's based on ticks the right boxes, so sharpening it up wasn't really going to end in disaster, was it? There is, however, one quite large problem with it. That'll be the price. You see, in order to make a good car, you need to put good things in it. And this is a limited run, so you can find the best of the best to put in it, hence all the toys. However, they do push up the price a lot. In the UK, this costs £32,000, which is an enormous sum of money. That's Audi S3 territory. That's even more worryingly Focus RS territory. They're both very different cars. They're both bigger, more powerful, etc. But still, it's a lot of cash. Luckily, those that buy this thing will likely not care. They'll love its looks, its noise and how it goes round corners. They'll also all be British because the John Cooper Works Challenge is just for us in England land. Sorry, rest of the world. Forget the price tag, seriously, forget it. This thing is utterly fantastic and worth every single penny. As a compromise of a road and track car, Mini is onto something truly, truly special with it. It's fantastic. Now here's the thing, if Mini shifts these hundred quick enough, and knowing Mini fans, they almost certainly will, well imagine what's going to come next. <laughs>